Welcome back to Rockstar Brewer. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go through the nightmare that is rinsing the caustic out of your brew house. Uh, let's take a look at that. What we're gonna be talking about today is uh, rinsing a brew house. Uh, so obviously you're gonna CIP your brew house pretty frequently. Uh, and you're gonna have caustic going in all around and it's really important that you rinse the caustic effectively from your brew house. If you don't rinse the caustic effectively from your brew house, what can happen is the caustic can wind up in your next batch of product. It's gonna change all your pH readings from, um, you know, in your mash and your wort and that sort of thing. Uh, also, it's a food safety risk as well, so it's really important that you effectively rinse a brew house. The challenge around um, rinsing a brew house is not so much the cleaning of it. The cleaning is pretty simple. All you've got to do is basically send the caustic in all the different pathways in a brew house and uh, you're effectively going to clean the brew house. But rinsing is where the real challenge lies because um, when you start rinsing, you actually can't see the caustic as it's being rinsed and as it goes onto the floor, it gets recovered back into your CIP set. So the thing about caustic is that it's an alkaline, it's a base, right? Which means it's opposite of an acid. Um, and so, uh, what we can, there's, there's a couple of different ways in which we can get rid of caustic out of our brew house. Uh, firstly, we can use water. Usually it takes a lot of water to basically flush all of the caustic out of the system. Um, it's really common in the wine industry for wineries to use something like citric acid to actually neutralize the caustic uh, and get it out of their system. We tend not to do that uh, in breweries, although if you're gonna use citric, I, I certainly don't see a problem with it. I don't do it myself, but I certainly don't see a problem with it, um, provided that it is also rinsed properly. Um, so what we mainly use in a, in a brewery on a brew house is, is lots and lots of water. What we kind of need to keep, keep an eye out for is things called dead legs. So basically a dead leg is uh, a, uh, a pathway with a junction and the flow of the caustic and therefore your rinse and also your rinse water might be going in one direction um, but there's that little leg off to the side that doesn't actually get that direct flow uh, and what can happen is a they cannot get washed properly during the caustic but most importantly they actually can be really problematic to rinse and they can actually harbor a little pocket of caustic which you're ultimately trying to rinse out so to show you what a dead leg is on a brew house, if we have a look over here at this particular bit of pipe work, right? So we've got uh, lots of actuators here where the flow of uh, liquid can go in all sorts of different directions. Uh, let's say we're trying to rinse in this direction here. Then these three uh, uh, areas off to the side here, these junctions, actually are what's called a dead leg, right? So we need to make sure that we're rinsing uh, along the main pathway and that we send water up into each pathway uh, so that it gets adequately rinsed. Rinsing all the parts of a brew house uh, can be quite problematic and so for some brewers out there who will sort of have some rinse water going through a particular pathway and onto the floor and they'll use their fingers to check if the caustic has been rinsed and what they're checking for is a slippery feeling in their fingers. Uh, that's not safe to do. In fact, that's really dumb because the reason why your fingers get slippery uh, when you are rinse, when, when, you, when you get it on your skin uh, is that's called saponification. So the, so the sodium hydroxide in your uh, caustic solution is actually turning the fats in your skin into soap. Uh, so clearly, don't turn yourself into soap. Uh, use a proper tool uh, in order to, make, to, to check that your brew house is rinsed. The right tool to use to check that your brew house is rinsed uh, is a chemical called phenylphthalein. It's got a really funny name. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the screen there. Um, there's lots of pHs and THs and all sorts of dumb stuff, but phenylphthalein is the name of the chemical. Phenylphthalein is basically the main tool that you're gonna use uh, in order to check that your caustic is rinsed. Um, it's a really interesting chemical. Basically how it works is if the pH of the rinse liquid or anything that it touches for that matter is above around 8.2, it'll turn a pinkish purplish colour. Um, how you actually check your rinse uh, safely is make sure you're wearing some safety gloves, uh, grab a plastic jug, 
grab a sample uh, for, of your rinse water. Make sure you rinse that jug out a couple of times so it's not contaminated with your previous sample. Um, grab your phenolphthalein and just put a couple of drops in is all you need. If you can see it turn pink, that means that they're still caustic and you need to keep rinsing or find that dead leg that you haven't rinsed yet. If it comes up clear, you're all good. What the phenolphthalein does is it's giving you a validation to make sure that you're actually rinsing all those different dead legs that exist inside, uh, inside your brew house um, so that you wind up with a pristine brew house ready to make awesome beer. So get out there brewers and make sure that you uh, adequately rinse the caustic from your brew house because you don't want caustic in your beer, that's really dumb. If you want to know how I help professional brewers make world-class beer in their breweries, head on over to my website. Thanks heaps for watching, don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next episode.